All right, we set. Okay, cool. Again, um, so I would start, um, I have like some 10 slides to go through and then we can start the, the discussion. I mainly the, uh, tied to this um, discussion around navigating the tech world. Um, uh, I'm going to like have this um, discussion with uh, some uh, what I went through in terms of my experience. And again, my name is Abu Bakr. Uh, and um, I am currently working as a data engineer with uh, um, Kitopi, uh, based in United States, uh, I'm United Arab Emirates and in Dubai. And um, I am um, a proud alumni of Mountain Academy. I was with um, Batch 3 and it was um, just quite an exciting time. And I have been working as a data engineer for about uh, four plus years now. And um, today I'm with you guys to share uh, my experience. And I will start with uh, uh, explaining the my journey in the tech world and with a uh, key focus on uh, my early exposures and uh, my interest. Uh, mainly as all um, young kids are, I was uh, fascinated with um, what uh, the computers can do at like at a very young age. Uh, as to what uh, a small cell phone can do, how you can like uh, communicate with someone you can't see and still hear them loud and clear. Uh, you can have like a video conference call with uh, multi people around multi people people around the world, and you have like uh, you understand uh, what they are saying and you can hear them in real time and all of these things. So I've been fascinated with this, and at a young age I decided that I was going to. Uh, be become a game developer because at that as at that point uh, the main focus was um, how to get the uh, the latest game installed on my father's um, laptop and how to uh, play it and have uh, like a wonderful time and in most cases um, I don't succeed it's either there is some issue with um, capacity of the system not able to like run the game or one error or the other so we usually like go to um, Google and uh, try and troubleshoot this to like um, resolve this and that has that piqued my interest at uh, as at that early age and I wanted to become a game developer and at the point I moved into not becoming a game developer anymore and just wanted to become a computer engineer where I could like um, open it uh, open a system and troubleshoot it in terms of the um, like motherboard um, fixing, um, upgrading the RAM and all of those things. And I spent a couple of uh, months doing um, some of these things before uh, my um, university days, but I didn't find it so much uh, interesting uh, and uh, that kind of um, pivot. And um, prior to me completing my um, high school um, certification, I had um, what's three to six months uh, with one of my um, older brothers who happens to be studying computer science at the, the university then and he usually comes home with all of this uh, project that he has worked on and uh, it seems like quite fun and interesting and he introduced me to my first programming language which was uh, Visual Basic then uh, and um, learning this for a few months I was able to like build um, a my first program which was uh, a calculator and I was kind of proud about this uh, I wanted to like show my friends as to what I was able to do but then I was um, limited to the uh, because I had only done this with like um, a desktop so I have to like invite them over it before I can actually show them so it wasn't much of like um, a big achievement but back then it was uh, something huge for me and I was quite happy about that and when it comes to like uh, deciding which um, which program I would like to like, study in the university. It was quite easy for me. I wanted to study uh, computer science and that's what I uh, enrolled for and got into. And I did this for uh, for four years in the university. And during this time, I was exposed to like the different kind of uh, different programming language. So I, I learned the uh, C, the C sharp, the C++, the Java. We're learning all of these and um, completing uh, small projects uh, within the school and within the, uh, within groups. Uh, and it was quite um, interesting at, at that point, but there was no uh, specific um, there was no specific um, career path in there where I have like uh, decide what I want to become like um, a web developer or like a software engineer 
or things like that. Back then when, in the 2017, 2016-ish, the buzz for um, data science was not exactly huge, but in 2018, it kind of uh, peaked and it was, um, it was like, it was the only thing everyone was talking about us at that point. Um, everybody was like trying to um, learn how to become a data scientist because as at that time, it was, um, it was huge then, right? It was like um, the chat GPT of currently right now. That was what it was in 2018. And uh, luckily enough for me, my um, career transition in my third year, I uh, I came across an advert uh, for a data science bootcamp where uh, we, the participant, or uh, the prospective participant would uh, need to complete a um, set of um, course and um, do uh, participate in a competition on um, cargo and the top uh, 150 uh, would be selected to like go to the uh, boot camp and learn more about data science and meet peers and you know from uh, connections and all that and um, since um, i was not like i haven't decided what to do in terms of what i want to do after uh, my graduate days and which area i want to like focus on i decide uh, to um, enroll in this uh, program and um, I completed the coursework, did the uh, the competition and um, luckily enough for me, I was ranked uh, one of the top 10 and I eventually uh, got into the uh, the boot camp. In this boot camp, it was like an eye opener for me. I learned a lot. I met a lot of people that were actually doing big in terms of being like a data scientist and things that they were doing. Even the word um, data engineer or like uh, machine learning operation and stuff like that. I didn't know anything about this as a this time 2018 and all i wanted to be was just a data scientist i wanted to uh, build the model for a living and um, that's about it and um, after the boot camp i I've, I've got to know a lot about um, data science i was building models with my jupyter notebook and it was i was mainly participating in competitions on um, cargo um, analytics video and um, I think Zindi came around around 2019-ish at that point as well. And mainly it was just participating in competition and I built like a lot of models and they were just sitting uh, in my computer with nothing to do and all of that thing. And um, in 2019, I completed my um, uh, undergraduate degrees. And uh, thankfully, um, I got into uh, the, uh, the organizers of the bootcamp uh came back uh because we did some sort of a competition in the boot camp as well and um i did well for myself and they came back uh, they offered me uh, a position of like an instructor where in data science people that have like interest in uh, becoming um, a data scientist as at that time it was still um, a huge thing and people wants to do that. So I um, I became an instructor and I did this for about um, a year. And ending of, uh, I think 2019, close to the start of um, 2020, I, um, I saw, I saw uh, 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 it was a WhatsApp um, um, group chat where I saw the advert of um, Ten Academy uh, training people to become um, data science. For batch three, the main focus was uh, data science then as well. And since I already had like interest in this and I've been doing this for a while, I thought it was just going to be uh, something that I would just like walk in and you know um, get it. And also, I wanted to uh, work for a company where I'm like uh, building models and uh, seeing this model used in like a production environment. And um, I was trying, I was getting tired of just building the model and just like keeping it in my uh, machine. And also um, I, had, I was talking like um, the training loop where I was just learning new things, but I wasn't exactly making much progress as at that time. So I thought I would um, enroll with um, 10 Academy and see how it was gonna be. And because I've been doing this for about a year and a half, I thought it was just gonna be like a walk in the park. It shouldn't be that hard. Uh, things that they were gonna like I explain was just gonna be something I already know. Uh, but to my surprise, it was uh, kind of a little bit um, different. And it was, um, it was, uh, it was, different for me and uh, it was not exactly what I was expecting 
and that brings me back um, that brings me to the uh, next thing that i want to talk about which is uh, my experience uh, at uh, pen academy um in one word to like describe it it was fun uh, one word is just fun and the uh, main reason why i said this was because um it has its um, ups and downs it has it's uh, the time where you want to like uh, just quit and don't do it anymore. Uh, it, it has a point where you're on top of the world because you're happy about the achievements you just made. And it, it was, um, and at the end, it was quite, um, um, I feel a little bit sad because I was like letting go of the uh, waking up very early in the morning and sitting eight hours straight, just trying to understand the week's challenge and trying to, uh, meet deadline and uh, submit. So I, uh, the the eagerness to like do to push yourself every other day was not gonna be there anymore. So it was uh, that was like the um, sad part that I think uh, I kind of felt when uh, when it was ending. But uh, let me talk about what happens at, at the start. So we had like uh, a test phase, a one week test phase where we had to go through uh, some selection because there's like a lot of um, application and there was only uh, a few slots available. And uh, the one week was um, very, uh, very challenging to say the least because uh, you had to learn new thing every day, apply it and then wait for result at the end of the day. So it was, it was very challenging to like learn a lot of things and like a couple of uh, minutes and uh, uh, and see it work out, like get the result out of it, like really fast. And uh, after that one week, I I fell sick because uh, I wasn't used to the um, to the uh, was to the stress level that I went through that time. It was quite stressful, and uh, but um, I was able to like push through and get through it. And it had and uh, eventually I got into the challenge, and we had. Um, we had a 12 week long uh, kind of um, training mainly focused on uh, becoming a data scientist at the end of uh, the 12 weeks, but you know, with prior experience and um, a lot of um, learnings that you need to complete. And um, because of the gaming, uh, the gamification kind of um, experience that we have, where there was like um, a certain leader where there was going to like be released uh, every end of the week that you complete the challenge, and there's going to be like different subsections of um, leaders every other week where you have like uh, uh, the, the 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 submission that has like the best uh, presentation skills or the submission with the best. Um, uh, object oriented kind of approach or 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 the kind of um, research that you put into the work that you put uh, that you have um, turned in so all these things makes it so much fun to want to like um, give your best and then um, deliver it uh, also the um, the the one thing that I look forward to at like every other day was the uh, the daily stand-up where uh, my uh, my peers and uh, the instructors uh would like um come get up together and, and have our daily stand up and we would share update as to what we did um yesterday and we, what we plan to do today and there you get insight as to who is doing what on a certain day and you can easily like uh go to them and ask for help if you are ever stuck and um there is the instructor that are like readily available to like help you as well and you don't get that um readily in like uh in your day to, in your normal day-to-day -day work you will get that in like in the in this kind of fashion with uh, ten academy so it was uh it was um it was an interesting time and um uh, the the most difficult part of this was uh not just turning in the uh the assignment or like the project that you have to submit or meeting the deadline it was uh mainly about uh what's the next thing that is going to happen next week what's the uh next uh project that we're going to like be working on um uh what what else am i learning this new week or what else do i need to relearn this new week and how how far have i come in terms of my uh, my programming skills or my um, ability to um, talk with uh, peers that i've never met before and how can i communicate in an effective fashion where they can actually understand me so all of these things couple together and you uh, makes it so much um, interesting and fun and meeting uh, new people you are building a network outside of your base outside of your country outside of your normal friend groups so it's uh, it was like a big eye opener for me because this is the first 
kind of um, academy where I've been in and uh, I was opportune to like uh, uh, meet new people that are different from the, that have like different kind of culture, different kind of um, tradition. And we also learned about different cultures and traditions as well while uh, at the uh, learning detail academy. And there were fun times too, I think um, on Wednesday, usually there's like a uh, one hour conversation where we just um, tell jokes, uh, have fun and all of those things. So that was like, uh, uh, call it like an icebreaker when you're like too much focused on the 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 deliverables that you need to like work on this week there's like a icebreaker that you can do as well with your peers and the instructors so it was uh it was an exciting time um in um, then academy and that brings me to um the next phase because after ten academy the um the focus now is how do you package all of these new things that you say you've learned uh how do you start the the uh, not just derive value based on what you've done, but also kind of make a living out of uh, out of um, the skills that you've acquired now. Now um, you say um, after the twelve weeks, the the belief is you should be uh, should have improved not just um, technically, but in your soft skills as well, your communication, your writing, uh, also your listening skills should have improved. And now you can package all of this into. Um, um, into one um, task and try and get a job with it. And this was uh, quite challenging um, for me and I think for um, some of the peers during uh, my time as well, uh, because it, we we were uh, coming straight out of like an academy with loads of information. We're just ready to um, divert like the um, job market and uh, try and get um, a job and uh make a living out of this because at the end of the day we all uh we all want to uh be successful at what we do and not just um by ourselves but to uh, also uh be recognized for doing uh, amazing work and uh, um joining a good company would be like a good way to do this and you know give joy to either the customers of the company or the peers at which you uh, work together in the um, company uh, so one of the things i would like to share on in terms of um, job search is uh, to um, always update uh, your resume for the jobs you're applying for in my case it was uh, specifically speaking from uh, my experience it was uh, difficult uh, at the first phase to um, get a job uh, um, i mainly because there is uh there is no uh what's the word there there is no um huge amount of um, experience from um building uh models and trying to like um apply it so what i what i did was um i made uh i relearn and um try to uh become uh um, versatile in terms of um, what i do uh so when i learned when i was with ten academy and um, applied all the learnings that I got from Ten Academy into um, learning a new thing and learning a new profession. And that's why um, I learned about um, data engineering. Uh, so right after um, Ten Academy, um, there was a boss of data engineering, I think around late 2020, early 2021. And there was um, a full course about uh, becoming um, a data engineer on, um, on data camp and kind of like outlined all this uh, process that you need to like go through the the uh, the skills that you need to have and all of those things and because i was fresh out of uh, an academy where i was grilled for the for the last 12 weeks it was pretty much easy to just go through all the uh, materials that they have and uh, complete um, the project and be like the best uh, uh, data engineer that i could be as at that time and um, that kind of like refocused me but even before um, i decide uh, i decided to become um, a, uh, a data engineer i was uh, i was asking this uh, main question as to um, as a data scientist what happens is you just you get a csv file and you go through the csv file and you clean it a, um, a little bit if it needs cleaning and then you apply your pipeline through it and at the end of the day you have a you have a model but i was asking uh, the question as to where does this csv file come from 
who is uh, who is responsible for generating the csv file that was like my main question and that was when i came across uh, data engineering who, who which like the literal definition is just uh, people that are responsible uh, for your data they designed um, the pipeline to aggregate your data from like multiple sources and make it um, available to um, stakeholders in this case it could be data scientists data analysts or even business um, stakeholders right and um and when when i found this i was like data science is uh, mainly about uh garbage in garbage out mainly the data that you give it is like the model is as good as the data that you give it you give to it so i was what if we can make the data a little bit better before it gets to the data scientist maybe the model would have like a little bit of improvement in terms of the accuracy or what's not and that was what uh piqued my interest and i decided to uh, learn more about um, data engineering and eventually i yeah, completed some course and uh i was uh I was um, lucky enough to uh, to to I was lucky enough to be able to like um, apply some of these things that I've learned and complete uh, uh, some project and I also dabbled into a little bit of um, open source uh, and that kind of like opened um, a lot of um, opportunities and doors for me uh, when it comes to like um, job search. So I was able to start applying for jobs that was not mainly about um, data science but also. Um, data engineering since i have um, experience in in that as well so uh and one thing i was doing constantly was always um, updating the resume based on the jobs that i'm applying to and also uh because we we practiced uh, uh introducing ourselves during in 10 academy uh to each other oh i'm this this is what i do for fun uh this is what i'm currently working on this is what i study in school blah 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 this kind of like build the reports like um, be able to um, start a conversation with someone that you don't even know and that kind of helped me in terms of like writing um, code emails to um, people that I found online I'm trying to like build a network with them uh, because LinkedIn is like um, a good place to like find uh, people for like for instance if you find if you uh, come across like uh, opening in a particular um, organization even after you have applied to that uh, to that uh, position you should also um, search for uh, people that work in that um, organization and um, and reach out to them, try and explain, I mean, try and make um, a connection with them. And maybe you might be able to get a referral or maybe you'll be able to like um, kickstart your um, application. I did this a lot by um, not just with LinkedIn, also joining um, uh, Slack communities uh where you can find uh there there are channels where it says jobs and you can easily find people posting um jobs there so i joined a lot of like um slack this slack communities and either they post um, jobs there or i find uh people of interest there and we can easily um uh, uh be friends with them and even if you're working like uh, on a complex uh, project, you can reach out to them and ask for help as well. So it's kind of like helps to be able to like start this conversation with uh, people that uh, you find interesting and um, reach out to them and be um, friends with them. Um, another key point about um, job search is to do a little bit about um, research about the company that you're applying to. This is essentially um, important in the case where uh, you 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 got through the first stage of your resume it was picked by the um, HR and they should do like uh, an initial call and um, they usually ask if you know anything about the company and it's very it's very good to be um, honest up front and tell the truth saying you don't exactly know much about the company, but when you apply, you did some research about the company and tell them a little bit about the company. This kind of like, this would pique the interest of the HR saying, oh, you, you're passionate about whatever uh, whatever the company is doing. And that kind of like um, may help you get to, um, to the next phase of the technical stage or uh, whatever comes after the uh, after the um, the initial screening. I uh, also have a uh, have a tracker. I have like an Excel um, spreadsheet where you constantly um, update based on the jobs that you have applied to. Um, and um, if you pick this with like the different kind of resume that you have, 
used for um, application, you can uh, jumble and shuffle and be able to uh, find, I mean, to trick the um, the ATS system that usually does the um, this, uh, the picking of the resume and you might be able to like get through um, the next stage if you if you do this. So having a tracker is one uh, thing that I also um, use during uh, my job search. And uh, one important thing uh, that I noticed with the job search is there are periods where there's like a lot of um, openings and there are periods where it's just difficult to like get the jobs. So for instance, during the November, December, January, February uh, time, I've noticed that there are a lot of like um, openings during this time and uh, there are recruiters reaching out or looking for uh, to fill new positions during these times and also around uh, i think um, june july and august this uh, this month as well uh, i think mainly just june july it's usually uh, a lot of um, openings uh, available during this time as well and um, you you can um, prioritize uh, picking these times to like um, apply for jobs and all the times just um, keep on learning keep on um, improving and um, i think contributing to uh, open source is another um, good way to like uh, get noticed and get um, uh, get recognized in the community and easily even if you're not getting like a job with um, the company or with the company you might easily get into like a contract uh, contract kind of work or get into project based kind of employment where you uh, task for the next three months just working on a specific project and you you deliver uh, this uh, this i found very uh, this I've like experienced in, uh, in first hand where I've contributed into some certain um, open source and the uh, the owner of the open source kind of reached out and says uh, we can we are currently working on this uh, internally and we would hope to like uh, continue this uh, this kind of project and this is our uh, milestones these are the timelines that we have if we can fit it into this so contributing to um, open source putting your work out there letting people see what you've done and what you're planning to do or what uh, or the kind of like uh, networks that you have will kind of um, open doors for you and help um, put you on like the um, the, uh, the bigger map of like getting um, a job or being engaged with um, doing something impactful and um, that part of the uh, tips and advices um, that i have uh, one uh, other one that I have is uh, be open to learning, on learning and relearning. Uh, this is uh, this is something I found uh, somewhere I can't remember exactly, but uh, it's mainly about uh, learning um, something now, and then um, on learning it, trying to like not in terms of forgetting what you've just learned and just um, have uh, an open mind of like, or maybe I've learned object oriented um, programming approach now and uh, this is the way it's done in say for instance in a python programming and then when you get to um, java there's there's definitely object-oriented programming there as well but then the, probably the method is a little bit different uh say for instance in, in python there is no uh, there is like um there's a different way of doing uh creating an abstraction class and it's a little bit um different when you go, go to um, java as uh, uh, java a programming language so this is uh, what i mean when i say uh, learning on learning and um, relearning it uh, also always have uh, a positive um, attitude where uh, where you are always uh, i think being happy on a constant base kind of uh, will put your mind at rest and at ease and you can easily tackle whatever challenge that you have as well so um, always have a positive attitude and if you're working on a project and you feel you're stuck and you've been doing this for like say four or five hours and you're not making any valuable progress uh, i think it's better if you step away from your system and do something fun in my case if this happens to me i'm usually um out uh it's either i start playing games on my phone or i just watch um, a youtube short that is funny to me or i just listen to a, a comedy just to take my mind off what i was working on, on and um when when you do this, you get into this uh, 
passive um, thinking kind of um, um, ability where you're not exactly focused on the work that you were stuck in, but you kind of like still think about it uh, at the back of your mind. And maybe there you get some inspiration, you are able to like uh, then figure it out. Oh, maybe I was missing this semicolon and then you just come back and add it and then you're good. Uh, also um, document your steps as so you can value the uh, progress that you're making. This is essentially very um, uh, important because we sometimes you feel like the progress you're making is not big enough when you say, for instance, you compare it to someone else. I think you shouldn't compare uh, yourself with like someone else. I think you should just compare yourself with yourself, probably yourself of yesterday. You should compare it with what you have today. And if you document your uh, process in a, in that way, you are able to understand the kind of progress that you've made over time. And you are able to uh, boldly say, I've done this yesterday, I've done this today. And this is what, this is how my today is going better than it was um, yesterday. And you kind of like uh, move on from there. And um, staying motivated is um, an important thing. No matter how um, difficult it gets in terms of the, the, the deliverables that an academy is asking to you to like deliver or deadline is getting super hard. Always uh, never give up because the um, as the saying goes, the great things usually takes time. So you, you need to like uh, put in like a um, good amount of effort to actually get um, um, great things out of it. And um, that is the end of my uh, presentation. I would uh, stop sharing now and go back to chat to see if there are any questions. Um, you can open up the mic and um, ask a question. I'll be happy to answer them. Yes, Abdullah Ahmed. So, hi, I woke up. Uh, really nice overview of your experience. I have a couple of questions. So, the first one is here at Ten Academy, each week, we are usually um, introduced to a new subject and we will be learning uh, some somehow within a week then we'll be going to the next subject the next week so we don't have that much of a deep understanding for what we are doing so from your experience at the academy vaccine was it the same and uh, what did you do once you uh, once you graduated from the academy did you like uh, go through some process to actually deepen your understanding of uh, what you did before so that's my first question if you can answer that okay okay cool thank you very much for the question um uh, what i did was most of the things um that we learn um are very important but you have to find what's most important to you once you identify what's most important to you you take note of that and um after um, the um after the training phase, when you eventually um, get uh, the time, you can then deep dive into it. Also, um, while you're learning this new concept at that particular week, you should um, try as much as possible to get um, uh, enough information of about whatever you're learning in that week and document all that process. And it's very um, important, say for instance, if you're learning about a new um library this time around uh, it's very important to have the uh, the documentation of that particular library that details everything the library is about and you can um, go back at the end to um, understand what was taught during that week and what you've understood and which area that you need to cover up and that way you can easily map uh what's left and you can um, cover that up after um, the training because I feel there's like a lot of in information overload that would happen when you learn something this week and then you need to like learn another thing um, the next week so you're not exactly like learning um, um, the in details but if you uh, document what you've learned that certain week um, after the training when you get um, the time you can go back and um, refresh um, your learning that would um, help um, a lot yeah okay so I, uh, from your uh, presentation, I learned that you chose a path for data engineering and you took, you took a course from data camp. So is there like any such um, a course that outlines which paths we should go from the beginning to understand the whole thing, what we are getting into? 
and if you can share some resources. Uh, what you are asking is it in terms of you have decided which part you want to go, or you're looking for something that decide the parts you want to go. Oh no, like if, if let's say I decide to be a data engineer, like oh. take the path you took. Mm. Which which uh, which resource should I go and look over so I can have the, the bigger sense of what I'm doing and okay. understand the things that I'm doing deeply. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so in in my case, uh, my found data camp to be uh, quite um, interesting, and the main reason why this is is because they have like um, a car, a path. So in in data camp, you are able to find different career um, path that are out there. There's the data scientist part. There is the data engineering part, the MLOps part, and in this, if you enroll in any of these part, there are steps by step a uh, kind of course that you go through starting from like um, improving your programming skills to like using the tools that exist in the data engineering world up onto like building a, a big project out of these things so it kind of like detail it takes you from like the beginner stage up onto like the intermediate stage at the end of it and you're not skipping any phase you go through all of this that is if you enroll in like uh, in the career path there is also option where you like choose courses but um as someone that is like getting started in like um, the specific career path it's better if you enroll in the um, career path i hope that is what is still called and you can take the course in like um, hierarchical order so it's arranged from like the beginner stage to like the intermediate stage and you won't miss out on um, any details nice all right thank you thank you Albert. thank you Any other questions? Yes, Abdurrahman. Uh, hello. Uh, it's a really good presentation, uh, but uh, for some reason on the connection, uh, I couldn't hear, uh, hear all the things, but. Uh, this part where you said uh, uh, you uh, in the last uh, 12 weeks of the program, you go back and completed the, the projects. Can you please uh, repeat this again or tell me if this is uh, a good strategy or you will find, I will find uh, a good time for doing this? Um, if I understand, if I understood your question, you're asking about uh, what you do after the uh, the twelve weeks of training? Is this your question? Uh, it's exactly about the last twelve weeks. Last the last three weeks. months is. Uh, can I go back and complete it? Uh, the project that uh, I'm interested in, or it will be hard to do this. No, I don't. I don't think it will be hard to do it because you, if you like. The, starting um uh, this from from like um a new plane then it might be hard but you've been um doing this for say the last three months and now you're just in the last um you, you've been doing this for the first three months and now you're just in the um in the end of the uh in the last um three months right so you you already have the experience of like um uh, um, doing like completing a project in like uh, say specific week or completing one project in one week so the momentum is already there so since you already have that it should ideally be your body should ideally be able to like cope to um, uh, relearning these things um, completing the project uh, in the um, last week the question that uh, Abdul Hamid answer which I think um, is related to yours was that um, is asking if we're learning new things every other time how do we uh, get uh, to like go deeper and understand this thing? And it's the answer. The answer that I feel should be uh, should be it is um, you should pick the in you you should pick an interest as to what you want to learn more about, and uh, and then document what you have learned during the week at which you are actually learning this. And then after after the um, uh, program, you can then go back 
and uh, relearn the things that are left from um, this new thing that you've uh, just you learned in the past uh, few weeks. And I made an example of um, learning uh, a specific um, library, and uh, probably used one module of the library during the week at which you were completing the project. And there were other parts of the library that you still need to like um, complete. And in this case, there's like a documentation available for the library. You can reference this documentation, uh, map out what you have learned already, and that way you will understand what's left and you can easily um, learn that after the training. I hope I answer your question, Abraham. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I have another question. Uh, you may answer it in the, in the session. Uh, how long it takes you to, to find a job after 10 Academy and the main ob obstacles you, you faced? The, how many, how many, um, months does it take me after 10 academy and what was the other question sir yeah uh, how how it took how it, uh, how you take to find the job uh, after 10 academy how months is or or year uh, okay or years you. yeah it took um, it took me um, a while uh, very uh, not a very long time but um, a long time after the uh, training i can estimate it in terms of month but it was um, close to four to six months uh, before I get uh, like um, a good job, so to say. But in this uh, four to six months, I was learning to becoming um, like a data engineer, firstly. Uh, also, um, there's, uh, there's a part that was set out uh, for us then, which is to join, um, what was the name called? Uh, to join uh, this freelancing website. I cannot remember Upwork. Yeah, the yeah. So we joined um, the freelancing website Upwork, and that way, um, although it was very difficult at that point because uh, when you join like any freelancing uh, website, you don't get job just like that because you need to build um, some kind of history and have some experience before you get it. But um, I was uh, fortunate enough to um, get um, at, uh, two. Uh, contract then so i was juggling this and um, learning um, data engineering during this time before i eventually um, got um, a full-time job so that was uh, that was uh, that was the process so i was continue i was continuing to like learn uh, more while um, doing the freelancing um, um, gigs that i got and eventually i got a, a full-time job that was uh, that was my process uh, okay, cool. Th thank you, Abu Thank you. Um, Fanuel, um, ask a question about what was your journey like after 10 Academy? Uh, it was um, to, it was not lonely, I would put it that way, uh, because uh, the instructors were usually um, asking about uh, progress. They were making progress. Uh, I mean, we were making progress with them as well, in the sense that uh, they were um, looking for jobs um for us to uh, to some um, extent and we were um, optimizing our resume our portfolio page together and at the point we're having like a catch-up call i think once a week to understand the progress that we we're making and even while i was working on like this um, gigs as well i got some peers um, that we were in the same batch during that time and we we kind of like ideate on some of the um, challenges that i was um, facing in the project as well so it was not um, lonely uh, but it requires uh, perseverance and believing that yes um, I was there's something out there for me to like um, go get and like uh, be better at that's what uh, that's what my journey was like after 10 academy and even right now uh, I'm still like very close to uh, some of my uh, peers in uh, uh, that we were in the same badge that time and uh, we still like kind of catch up and uh, understand the progress that each of us is uh, making. Um, Marlet is asking a question, what are the challenges you had faced during job search? Can be emotional interview process or whatever you had and how did you uh, came over them? Um, mainly it was um, how do you undo uh, the rejection phase? Uh, cause uh, the thing is, uh, for, for me, uh, I had to like um, apply to a lot of jobs and I had to deal with um, sorry, uh, deal with um, unfortunately, 
and at the point i i was like uh, uh before i even open an email i you i already know what's there so it's like okay let's just do this for the formality sake and uh and this continued for a while honestly and um to be quite frank it's not good because at a point you're like oh, maybe it's not just for me maybe i should just stop you know and just give up but uh yeah i i i i uh, i continue to like um, apply uh change change a lot of things change uh change region at which i was applying to um update resume get on um, calls with um, our own to um know what else is missing i even uh even after the 10 academy um, training we usually have calls not just the catch-up call but we usually have calls where we do uh, interview preparation as to how do you answer uh questions like this how do you maintain eye contact with like the person on the other side of the call uh and um how do you like kind of put some jokes into your answers just so they you they understand you have like a uh, good sense of humor and all of these things were like uh, coupled together with it but uh i just believe it's uh it's there for me and um now i'm um i'm happy with um like the, the job that i'm currently in and uh it's been fun since then yeah thank you So oh, I have one additional question. Yeah. So based on your uh, real world job experience, so for someone gra graduating from Tina Academy, which path would you uh, suggest one should take uh, based on the trend on the market currently? Like would it be the data engineering path, the Web3 path, the generative AI path, and especially for the generative AI, like how, how well is it uh, being adapted into the uh, data engineering world or like the company you are working at or at the market so yeah. which path would be the best to take okay um there's no like a direct answer to that i think the path that you take should be foiled based on your interest and what you want to um, do uh, and what you like to do like what gives you the what gives you the highest uh, what, what did you do? I mean, what will you do to get the most fun, right? For me, it's mainly about uh, when I was deciding to like become a data engineer, it was mainly about how can I make this data a little bit better such that if an analyst or a stakeholder or a scientist decide to use it, they can easily plug it into their model and get the result. That was the main thing that I wanted to do. And right now the interest has changed a little bit to like, how can I make the stakeholders a little bit happy? when i give them my data uh so that was uh, that was what do it for me but in terms of like um the general scale or what the market is um people or the market is um, leaning towards um generative ai where um everybody's just trying to like throw ai into their their code base or their company so to say but um i have a strong uh, belief that you can't just slam ai into it just like that you need like a good data infrastructure or you need like a good uh, data platform to be able to do uh to like use the ai because ai feeds on the data that is available and some companies have uh for lack of a, a better word uh messed up uh data uh, infrastructure and you can't just slam AI into this, it just it won't give you the right result. So uh, once you decide which um, areas gives you the most uh, the most fun, then you can um, learn more about it and improve on it. But for markets uh, wise, um, data engineering is still wild open and um, it's still like a good to go um, kind of field. It, the buzzword that existed um, two, four years ago is still there. Um, MLOps is still a great uh, field to go into because we are still struggling in terms of um, how do how can you um, deploy your models into production and maintain it and get some observability kind of um, report on it. Um, data analyst is still um, of a very um, good field as well, uh, building dashboard and report as well. And um, uh, I think blockchain too is still very good. Although I have very 
little to zero knowledge about uh, blockchain, but I feel uh, that is uh, that is also making a lot of noise in the news as well. So once you pick um, the area, just go straight into it and be the best that you can be and uh, collaborate with multi multiple people. Let them know how good you are and uh, the market will just open up for you. Okay. Um, and well, at one more question, how do you stay up to date in your industry and improve yourself? Very good question. Um, in my case, it's uh, it's most, uh, mostly about uh, so I have I have like communities where I have joined or on mainly Slack because Slack is the um, communication channel that we use even in the um, industry, and I have these communities where uh there's like constant update as to so for instance i'm interested in platform engineering so i have joined the community of um about platform engineering where they post um recent changes and updates that they have there and i find that um uh, interesting and um i read um articles i have uh so for me as a data engineer i have like people that i look up to in the industry and one of them is um seattle data guy and he's usually um writing an article once a week uh, about uh, latest trend, new um, data models, how people are doing things in their industry. And I have some other substats that I've subscribed to that I usually read um, every Friday and Saturdays to stay up to date on um, with the information. And here as well, you can pick up some like uh, pet project that you can easily do in like uh, Saturdays and Sunday. And because of like the kind of um, rigorous kind of experience that I have gone through through Intern Academy, I am able to like pick up say a, a project, not huge project, but like a, a, a small project, so to say, start it on like the night of Friday and do some work on Saturday before you uh, go out and have some uh, good time with your friends on Sunday and then continue this for like one or two weeks to like do some pet project and complete it just so you stay I mean you do things that you actually uh, find uh, fun also with work as well you can pivot and um, and um, request time with your uh, manager to say oh this is a kind of um, project that we're currently in now is it possible for me to like join this team and be able to like do this 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 so with this way you're able to like apply the new things that you um that you've just learned as well and um, deliver value to the company so in terms of staying up to date um, subscribe to like a lot of um, substack that i find interesting not a lot i kind of limited because having information overload is just gonna like also kill you so just um, a few of them that i kind of read on fridays and saturdays and um, yeah mainly that is uh, what i do um there are a few questions here uh, where did i start Okay, Alexander asked, uh, among, among the three tech areas from the Academy, how do you decide how decide to hit and search jobs in data engineering? I mean, from machine learning web three and data engineering options. I don't quite understand your question, Alexander. Can you uh, unmute and explain? Okay, thank you. Can I continue now? Yes, please. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for your nice presentation. I have a question uh, about you. Uh, in Ten Academy, at least there are uh, three tech areas data engineering, machine learning, uh, and the web series related tech jobs. Among this, your focus, uh, I think, from your presentation and your experience, I understand that data engineering. Yeah. So, so how you shift that from the just three tech areas? How you shift to data engineering? You have taken some courses from data camp also in data engineering After yes i did so uh, how you decided to shift okay. your take related searches on data engineering okay okay cool um so the question was around how i decide um to uh to pick data engineers opposed to the web three and machine learning. Uh, so, in, so during the so during my batch, we were focused on becoming a, um, a data scientist. And um, after the training, um, I was asking myself the question of uh, where does the data come from that the data scientists use to build their model. And while researching, I found a field called um, data engineering, and it explains what they do 
in terms of them building um, a pipeline that kind of get data from different sources, uh, put it in a place where it's usable by different stakeholders. And that was the main thing that that did it for me. And that's why, or that's how I decide to um, pursue uh, data engineering as like a career path for me. And as at that time as well, it was mainly data engineering, um, data science and uh, machine learning engineer. So I was mainly focused on um, the data engineering side uh, because of because it answered the question for me. And also I am able to um, write more of like um, a programming bit as opposed to um, just have a pipeline that is reusable in multiple um, cases. That's how um, I decide uh, to go with data engineering. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, I think I have uh, 14 more minutes. So um, uh, I'll answer the question of Linian. It says, which 10 academic project resembles more to the work you would do currently, if you remember them? Huh? Interesting. Uh, there was a there was a challenge at uh, I think during week seven. I'm not sure what it's called now. Uh, like the title, I don't remember. But it's mainly it was about writing uh, good quality code uh, that is reusable. So you are you are tasked with like uh, it was not clearly stated in the kind of objective for the tax, but the the idea was. Uh, build a kind of um, a solution that you can reuse in multiple projects. So, for instance, we're usually tasked with like uh, cleaning data every other time that we get a specific data, and uh, either every other time you have to like copy the same code in, from one Jupyter notebook to the other Jupyter notebook. And um, that time, I decide to like uh, build a package out of um, all of the codes that I have that that will do. The cleaning uh, for me, and I can easily just say import this from this and uh, just use. I mean, instead of like writing 15, 13 lines, you can easily just write one line and uh, get the job done. So that was uh, one thing that did it for me. I, I think this particular challenge was in week seven, and uh, that is kind of similar to um, what I do as a data engineer now, where um, uh, we've developed like an internal uh, package that kind of does most of the um, automation tasks that we um, need um, for us, especially in the front of like um, Herebyte. Herebyte is a um, tool, is a ETL tool that we um, use to like connect to like some API and get the data into our destination. And in most cases, this uh, this source or this connector does not exist and you need to like build it. And we are usually um, reusing codes every other places. So we decide to like build the internal package. And because I have had the experience of like developing an internal, um, like a kind of like package that is reusable before, I was able to like uh, pitch this to um, the person who were able to like um, develop this within the team. So I think that's uh, one thing. I think during uh, there there were other projects too that is like very similar to what I am doing now. But uh, during our time, the focus was uh, mainly about uh, data science. But I think the in in batch four where the, the focus kind of like shift between data science to like machine learning engineering and data engineering, there were a lot of uh, project that was done that we are currently like doing in the uh, in the industry now as well, and. Um, Fano says, if you can add on it, where do you find the Slack communities? Uh, good question. Um, so in uh, mostly, um, if you, so for instance, in um, for the guy, um, Seattle data guy that I follow on um, on YouTube, um, is usually, he has a Discord channel as well, where he's usually like um, updating and there are people in the same industry as you are, where they, uh, where they like send um, links as to uh, which um, which uh, which of the channels or which of the platform they are in, and you can um, join based on on this as well. So it was from this to the other one. Okay, this was like uh, from this specific channel to the um, next channel. It was uh, like that. And um, I'm sure if you, in case you don't know about um, Seattle Data Guy, I think is Seattle. Okay. You can easily just like searching for people that are interested in like data engineering. He has a, he has a, he has a website as well, and he has a YouTube channel. And in in his website, you would find links to 
uh, is this called channel and you can join it and from there you can easily like move from uh, but don't join so much channel because it's going to be like information overload and you might like get tired of it uh and one more question from Abraham. How frequently does the technology stack in data engineering evolve over time? And what has been your experience with these changes? Um, I would say it's not, there's not a lot of um, rapid change. So for instance, in some companies, their main focus is like providing real time um, data. And these kind of, and these companies is based on like um, big data. So they use technology specific to big um, data. And in this case, you're talking about Spark uh where there's like a, the distributed uh kind of multi-processing that happens and there are some company where uh what they need is just a uh, batch uh kind of um, data pipeline and here you just you're sticking with the normal um atl uh, kind of process of like um, using uh, python to develop your uh, custom connector um uh, using Hairflow for your orchestration tool i'm uh, using either snowflake or uh bigquery for your um from your source or your or your destination and mainly the challenge is when there's like a new um, source how do you integrate it when there's like a new api somewhere or you have to deliver um, de uh, develop a new api are you changing it so it's mainly about um, getting the basics right once you understand um, and once you're good with like writing good programs you should be fine with like adapting to any of the technology stack uh, all the other technology stacks are built on already existing uh, foundations so even um, the likes of um, um, once you understand like how to write um, good python codes it should be easy for you to uh, move to um, any other ones because it's just about learning um, the syntax and the um, AI, and the um, uh, the api methods that you need to call so it doesn't change um, that much it, it depends on like the company that you work for there are some um, um, gigs that I've done where it requires like uh, real-time data um, processing. And in that case, it was mainly about um, using uh, uh, big data uh, kind of um, um, architecture. So it was mainly, uh, Spark was the only difference in that I was introduced. And if it's just a uh, batch, the normal um, Python code will sh should be fine with it. So you don't have to like distribute anything in that case. Uh, and finally, about the reference searching algorithm you add. Oh, <laughs> this is this is definitely around somewhere. Uh, yeah, um, we should have. Uh, it's a very uh, it's a very long algorithm, uh, and we shouldn't uh, discuss uh, that uh, in this call uh, because we have like very less time. Assuming I know we're gonna like discuss it, I would have introduced or said that in the first phase, and we didn't have gone through all of the other important one. Uh, anyone to ask about our Steve question? Is this the girlfriend part? Yes, yes. <laughs> that <laughs> goes. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a lame um, algorithm. It didn't work so well. Uh, it didn't work so well, but uh, it was just a fun experiment that I, uh, that I uh, carried out and I decided to um, mention this to Aaron and Yababa at that time and uh so it's just something we do for fun you know like every other one right uh where if i've missed any of your questions uh please read them out so i can answer them in the next uh, six minutes yes yeah yeah i'm sorry if i butchered the name oh that's okay uh so can you tell us or a little bit clarify on that uh, Aaron told us he, he was not the top student, but he becomes the top uh, kind of reader. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that is um, that is true. Um, thing is, when when uh, when during the ten academy when we started, uh, um, it was like my first experience into apart from like the first week of the test phase that we did where I got sick and uh, when eventually we got into like the selected. I think um was it 50 of us from like like close to a thousand that applied and when we started around the first week second week i wasn't doing so well because i wasn't used to this uh completing us one project one week it's just too much work for me and i wasn't very good with um learning and just read uh, on learning and moving to the next thing so i was uh, uh i couldn't make uh, i was making progress but it was not um uh, was not evident so i was still like rock bottom 
and eventually um, I picked up that around I think the fourth fifth week I'm not exactly sure what changed it for me but it was um, I, I think it was mainly uh, my body got used to um, waking up early and just doing the work that um, that I don't like doing also I started taking the the uh, the 10 academy experience like a job so I would I had like um, so start by like 7 a.m and then end at like 6 p.m and then um, i mean i will have some breaks with, with here and there but after after the dinner you go back and you do uh, two to three more hours just to ensure you cover things up and um, i started to like um, read through what my peers was like submitting their approaches and all oh, and at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh, program i eventually was uh, I eventually came out as like the top, so to say. So I think it worked for me well in terms of like I was uh, my body was able to adapt to it. I was I was treating the academic experience as like the normal nine to five kind of job with extra hours, and eventually um, I was able to learn a lot and uh, apply them. So it was that was mainly it. Okay. Yes, Abdul Ahmed. So, uh, can we get the link your to the YouTube channel you were mentioning before? Yes. If, yes. Uh, if you can, maybe share your link then, so that we can connect as well. Okay. Cool. I will send you to in the chat. I am sending the um, the YouTube link. Uh, to answer your question, Malet, did you find a girlfriend with it though? Uh, no, it wasn't successful. Um, I think I need to like rework it. I haven't worked on it uh, since then. Maybe I need to change some things. And uh, here is the here is the website. I will I will send my uh, my. I'm not sure if I can find it. My LinkedIn to wait a minute. Okay. Um, I do have some um, work on uh, in in GitHub as well that you can um, check out. It's not exactly not all of it is uh, like good quality uh, work, but uh, you might pick up a few things from there. So I would send both of uh, both the GitHub link and uh, the LinkedIn to um, Rodas and. Um, uh, should share it uh, with you guys. Uh, that thing. Thank you. Thank you. I think that is it for me. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, Abubakar. We highly appreciate you. And also, thank you, everyone, for being so engaging and asking uh, questions big time. On my side, I don't have any question. I was actually curious to hear about the girlfriend thing and <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you so much, Abubaka. We appreciate you. And of course, we are going to be um, uh, sending in our, our connection requests so that we can stay in touch. And uh, yeah, if there are in no any other question, I think we can call it a day and close the session here. Is everything okay? We can give uh, some reactions or appreciation words in the chat box to Abubakar. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Abubakar. Uh, we, all, we, we look forward to we be also sharing with you our journey after 10 Academy. Like that would be like probably six months or eight every i mean anything we will be telling you how um our after 10 academy journey is also going and also uh yeah we look forward to be connecting in the 10 academy alumni when we reach there as well so yeah thank you so much everyone uh cool. see you on the other side of 10 academy on slack thank you abubakar again thank you thank you very much um have fun and enjoy it bye guys yeah, big time. We also had fun. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone, for now.